Yesterday, I posted a video about the Adventist Health Study number 2. I've been asked to go deeper into the data adjustments that were made. So I will then. Stick around. When you correlate X with Y, say height versus weight, you'll get a plot like this. A line function can be used to describe the line of best fit. This is the line that cuts through the data set with the smallest total error. Error is the difference between predicted values and actual values observed. The errors are called residuals. This has been an example of single variable regression, height versus weight. Good. Equally, we could describe best fit with an equation of the same form, but with two independent x variables. Let's say alpha 2 is waist measurement. Combine height, x1, with waist measurement, x2, and the residuals of weight, y, decreases. In other words, the prediction is improved. Important! The trend line is not actually a predictor necessarily. It is a description of historical data that may or may not predict future outcome. If it does predict future outcome, this would be with respect to a cohort at large and not with respect to an individual person. Multivariate adjustment. Any number of X variables can be plugged into or left out of a multivariate adjustment. Each additional regression coefficient added reduces the total residuals, but changes the slope coefficient and intercept. Epsilon at the end of the sum there is the residuals, by the way, for those that are keeping tabs on it. This means that a prediction of Y in a group of people who are fixed with respect to all other coefficients may not look anything like what was in fact observed in the cohort from which the prediction is in fact formed. Example, the Adventist study number two. Uh, there's a serious logical fallacy here. The use of multivariate correction relies on a number of assumptions, including an assumption of non-collinearity, i.e. Do our x variables in and of themselves correlate to one another? Uh, if they do, then putting in factors of that nature can double pump a correction um, or quadruple pump a correction, if you like. Uh, unfortunately, this test fails in the Adventist Health Study number two. The only model left, the one suggesting that there was any risk in eating meat, had just four correction factors. Those being the proportion of people in that group who were black or not black. Um, how many heat units per day were being consumed? Calories. Uh, the age of the group on average. And the gender split men and women in the group. Problem. As the quartiles of meat consumption go up through the quartiles, up to the highest end of meat consumption, those groups get progressively more represented by male people and progressively less by female. We know that after age 50, which is what these people were, the likelihood to die in any given year is higher in males than females. It's no surprise that the groups that ate the most meat were represented by having more men and less women in them. What a shock. Those factors are collinear. Was the group that ate more meat eating more meat because there were more men? <laughs> Did more men die because they ate more meat? Too many leaps of faith, too many cause and effect statements that cannot be supported. We're done.
I could talk about the other correction factors as well and the problems with those, but I don't need to. We're finished right there. That's why this correction is completely invalid as a predictor of what would happen in the future because it demands a cause and effect relationship be extant for the prediction to be valid and it's one that can't be made.